Shadow Verse. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in response to my last video, there was a minority of skeptics that accused me of being elitist, naive, presumptuous, and even rude to say that many of the video game animations that we see could be replaced with more historically authentic ones, more realistic, right, and still achieve many of the gameplay requirements. And they cited a couple of different examples that I'm going to address specifically to prove this categorically wrong, wrong, especially the primary example a lot of people refer to. This was the Elden Ring Greatsword and Colossal Sword animations. Now, these are just, they were a small minority. The overall reception to kind of my initiative, this project of uh, uh, medieval combat reference, the hashtag medieval combat reference, has been overwhelmingly positive. And there has been heaps of game developers, we're talking hundreds in the comments, right? Some even from AAA game development companies saying that this is they, lo they love the idea, they want this reference material, and it'll really help them out. This is awesome, I'm so <laughs> grateful for the positive response. And I now want to show, like in real time, that uh, it can be done, all right? Also, I'm not talking about purposefully over-the-top superhuman animations and move combos. I'm obviously talking about the combat animations for more realistic, grounded weapons that are used by characters that reflect realistic enough physical capacity. But even having said that, I think adding a bit more realism even into the superhuman movesets will help ground them and make it feel more realistic, which then makes the fantastical superhuman elements more believable and immersive as a result. Now, the reason why people reference the uh, um, Great Sword and Colossal Sword animations the current ones in Elden Ring was because they were claiming that the current ones needed to be the way they were to achieve up to three things that they referenced. One, the area of attack, so how wide of an area they were doing, and they were then saying you needed to have such wild overswings like they had in Elden Ring to achieve the area of attack. The second one was telegraphing. They needed this big wind up like this to have the appropriate telegraphing for PvP. That one I actually think is not a very good reason. I think there are a lot of video games that have nowhere near as much telegraphing to none that the gameplay works perfectly fine. And we're talking about PvP gameplay, and this is a lot of fighter games, okay? Well, we see it in Street Fighter where they just go into the attack. There's no big wind up. But they say, no, no, you need some balancing like that, especially for high damage weapons, because, because they do more damage, you need to balance it out to make them harder to hit, easier to see. And so even if we go with that logic, I will show that you can achieve a type of telegraphing wind up that is far more historically plausible and authentic. And the last reason they give was uh, the, uh, the speed. They, they, they're saying the attacks needed to be really slow, Okay, uh, and especially in terms of the follow-up attacks, the time between attacks needed to be slow enough, again, for gameplay balance for the really high damaging weapons, great swords, colossal swords, because they do so much damage, they needed to attack slower. And they were saying, Shad, if you did historical, um, if you did historical moves and everything, you'd be attacking far too fast like the examples you gave in the previous video. Those examples I gave were only examples. They weren't the only options. In actual fact, you have hundreds of different options that you can draw from to find something that is more realistic, more plausible, that looks far more precise, like the, the, the avatar is actually trained and knows what they're doing and they're not flailing around like a drunken ogre, all right? Hundreds of options you can pick to still achieve the gameplay balance you want. And so to prove this, I am going to make a new animation move set. We're here, front on and side on, all right, for the Elden Ring Greatsword and Colossal Swords and match the area of attack, the, the, the area where it offends, match the telegraphing, the timing and speed between attacks with a far more historically founded and effective realistic um, animation, I, I move set combo, right? And I'm going to play them next to each other. The Elden Ring animation with the one I'm going to replace it with, my, my one that I feel is way better, and it will achieve all the gameplay requirements that people were saying the Elden Ring animation needed to be that way, the, the uncontrolled wild way, because it needed to th achieve those things. Area of attack, the speed, 
and the telegraphing. Because this is the thing, when you look to historical sources, you don't need to be 100% accurate. And if people got that impression, that's not what I was in, well, that was not what I was meaning. I was saying more accurate, not 100%, not you have to do it exactly the way I showed, all right? And I was kind of demonstrating that with the different stances of the plow stance. Where sometimes you can do it like this, sometimes you can do it more like this, all right? And so there is flexibility within the historically founded moves and techniques that we're working with, and you can absolutely adapt them to the needs of the gameplay mechanics and still have it very largely founded on historical source. And this is what I'm going to do. You can adjust the speed, the timing, and if you need an attack to be slow, okay, it doesn't mean it actually has to be slow. You can do a slow wind-up. For instance, if I was in this position and you needed uh, an attack that took maybe one to two seconds, uh, and that this could be a second longer than another, a lighter like weapon attack to balance out the higher damage, you could be here and you could just do a wind-up here and then speed up towards the end to show that it's still strong and powerful. So wind up and like that. So I'm going slow and then bang. In actual fact, I can show it better with a lighter weapon. I'll be able to control the speed much better with this prop here because the avatars in the game are meant to be stronger, even more trained than me. And so if I was here to demonstrate slow and then fast, where I'd be going, right, that, see how we're doing it. So the Elden Ring Greatsword Light animation starts with three attacks that offend the same direction. They're diagonal, going top right to bottom left, bottom left to top right, top right to bottom left, and then it switches angle in the last attack to do top left to bottom right. That's the angle of attack in the area in which the Greatsword Light animations offend, but now let's replace it with something a lot better. So let's break this down and point out the specific improvements. Now, I'm not saying my form is perfect, actually. As I look at this very closely, I see many areas for improvement. But what I am showing is still a vast improvement from what we have seen in Elden Ring. We can see at the beginning I'm striking from a proper stance and I have vastly more balance than the animation in Elden Ring. In Elden Ring they are also telegraphing with their shoulder. Now I also gave myself enough of a pause so there is definitely telegraphing for any player to be able to see what I'm about to do because just have a look at how similar the timing is between my animation and Elden Ring's. So if the timing is exactly the same between the wind up and the impacts, you can't say there isn't enough pause before the strike lands to give the player or an opponent a cue or indication that a strike is coming, specifically in regards to these new animations that I'm proposing, because the timing is the same. But the Elden Ring animation is showing a terrible type of telegraphing, which is poor form and leading with the shoulder. At the end of the first strike, I still maintain a balance and end in a type of guard position, although I do round off that position to lead into the second strike and I end up leaning too far over to my left. I'm personally not happy with that. The original animation has it thud into the ground and the character leans forward and down, and if someone adopted that ending position in real life, it would be much harder for them to recover to either defend or follow up to another attack. I end the second strike in a guard position. This one is less known and people can assume that it leaves your front side open, but this is actually a very common position we see in historical martial arts. For instance, here's an example from Fiore. It's a position in which you can follow up in many types of defenses and attacks. The Elden Ring position here is once again off balance and overswung, where the sword is held further behind and they're leaning forward and presenting their shoulder much more. I'm leaning a little too far over at the ending of the third strike, but as we can see, nowhere near as much as the Elden Ring example. But what I adopt here isn't a great example of the type of historical guard position that this is closest to. Then when I round up to the large finishing attack, I'm rounding up into another historical guard position. This one from Fiore is called the Woman's Stance, also called the Zornhut Wrathguard from Maya. Also, I'm on balance. Have a look at what's happening in Elden Ring and how incredibly off balance the character is, and how much is leaning back and throwing all her weight into it, presenting too much of her shoulder. And then of course, the finale ending in another guard position where the sword is ready to recover. It is more on my center line, whereas Elden Ring's one is off center. It has been overswung and the character is off balance. The Elden Ring Greatsword Heavy Attack is actually really basic. It does have a lot of overswing, but there's a way we can justify it by going from Wrath Stance to Wrath Stance. 
and then back to Rathsands. Gonna be very easy. Now that replacement from uh, Wrath Stance to Wrath Stance gives the same area of effect. I don't necessarily like it. I think one would what would look really better is to do a main cut, reverse edge cut in holding the thumb over the guard like this, starting from Wrath. And so you can match the timing. It would do a 180 arc in front, but I'm not sure the Elden Ring attack actually hits people further than that area of attack. Now with the Colossal Swords, I actually don't have too much of an issue with how they are animated except the Zweihander. They are showing the Zweihander of being insanely heavy when in reality it's not. But paired to something like a Gut Sword, that I don't mind the big thumping animations where they could barely lift it because it's appropriate to something that size. I think they could make the animations look more trained and precise. That's, you know, they still might need to do a lot of effort into it, but they could try and, uh, you know, go with the momentum where they basically just go like that or something where it's like, where they have to get a lot of weight and just like that. See, already, more structure, more strength, showing the weight of a weapon that could suit a, you know, a gut sword wouldn't be appropriate to the weight of a Zweihander, but you can still do even better with the supersized swords. But with the Zweihander animations, I'm going to show you an example of more historically founded, realistic, you know, animations and movesets that will match the area of attack, the timing and the telegraphing of the pre-existing colossal sword animations. And again, just applying it to the Zweihander, not necessarily all the huge giant swords. So the Colossal Sword animation for the Zweihander goes from right to left about 165 degrees, and then left to right, yeah, that's about 360 degrees, and another left to right, another 360 degrees. So if you look to the stances in Fiore, we might be uh, starting at something like the woman's stance, which is a higher stance, to a type of long tail low guard, and then from there back to um, Woman's Guard High. And the Woman's Guard is similar, similar to a Wrath Stance if you look to the, the, the German traditions. Interestingly, I do think there's a way to incorporate a more precise spin attack for that last, you know, last move. And so let's try and do a variant that incorporates a spin. The thing I like about the spin is on the back stroke, I'm still offending with the blade. Even when my back is facing the opponent, my blade spins across my back, offending that side, follow up with a really big wide slash. The Greatsword Heavy starts with a thrust and then follows up with a very wide upward slash traveling from the left side to the right side. It nearly goes full, um, uh, like, 165 degrees over top by the look of it. Personally, I don't like the backswing in that upwards attack when it goes up and it ends over here. I'm not sure this part is hitting anyone. I would prefer from here to end in a high position after, so you, so you end in the, um, the thrust and then you go into a high attack like that. Ending there, I feel would be much better. So I'll try and show both. And there we go, a new set of combat animations that achieves the exact same thing as the pre-existing Elden Ring ones for, you know, Great Sword and uh, Colossal Sword specifically. We got very close to the same timing, the same telegraphing, and the same area of effect. And if you were to just lift or recreate these animations, put them into Elden Ring, and keep the same hitboxes and all those things, they would work just as well, but they would look so much better. But this is the reality. Even though I've been able to show it to you, I didn't necessarily need to because it's also shown in Elden Ring. All these people that were saying that sometimes you need to use 
unrealistic moves uh, to achieve certain desires in gameplays for area effect, for timing, for telegraphing, all those things. That's utterly wrong. I hope we've disproven that because remember, a lot of the historical moves are flexible and they're flexible enough that you can adapt them to the needs of the gameplay. And even in the examples that I showed, are they perfect? No, I exaggerated certain things. In a lot of instances, you wouldn't want to telegraph as much as I'm doing there, but how much better is it? I never said it has to be 100% perfect. If I did, I never meant that. I was meaning more realistic, not 100% realistic, okay? You can get it far more realistic and still exaggerate certain things to achieve what you need in the gameplay and make it look so much better and so much more realistic than this drunken flailing about, you know, animations that it looks like a character doesn't even know what they're doing. But how does Elden Ring already show this without my example? Well, guess what? For the great sword specifically, there are two great swords that you can get that have a different animation for the light attacks and they are so much better, far more realistic. They're not perfect. It's uh, like, I don't like that sometimes uh, at the end of an attack, it's not in a good guard position and they have to quickly change their position to get into a guard position. It's much better to have an attack that uh, flows naturally into an uh, authentic guard position, but they're, sh they're trying some really good guard positions where they're like this and, uh, and uh, there's some good ones in that one, right? But what's really interesting about this new animation set it changes the areas of attacks of the original greatsword animations completely and this contradicts the notion that people were saying that you need these unrealistic greatsword ones for the right timing and everything that and that if you always try and do it more realistically then it's just ne you can't achieve what you want when they've already done an Elden Ring. See Elden Ring is a great example and base point because there are signs that they've tried okay the contradiction that Elden Ring wasn't trying to have realistic animations contradicted by the katana animations, the rapier animations, the scimitar animations, and now this additional hit kind of new set on these two other great swords, light attack great sword animations for those new ones. That they were going for some level of authenticity, but it really feels like they just didn't have enough information to draw from. Because even these better great sword ones could be improved. And if you're saying, well, it's intentional then, because they have a fancy one for great swords and a wild one for the regular great swords, now it doesn't justify how bad those regular great sword animations are. You even with historical things, is there's not just one way to do it. There were some people saying, Shad, the specific examples you showed, you know, talking about the last video, just won't work because they're all vertical attacks. What, you think there's no horizontal or area of effect attacks in historical swords and ship? Absolutely there are. You just need to pick and find ones that fit best for what you want to achieve. And then if you want some more basic attacks for the regular greatsword ones and more fancy ones for these more prestigious greatswords, you can do that and still have the attacks look like they have structure and form and some level of training to, not this flailing wide, you know, just drunken style of fighting that we see in the straight swords, the greatswords and with the Zweihander in the Colossal Sword category. So once again, you could have really fancy, you know, sword animations, basic but still precise and effective sword animations, and still achieve a much better looking result. Because this is the whole intent behind it, okay? Even though I am pointing out some criticism here and there, it's in good faith. I'm trying to help improve the look of these video games because it does look better. Just compare the one-to-one -one examples. And that is why I'm promoting this hashtag medieval combat reference. I want to see what you guys can do. Fancy moveset, basic movesets. I already have great ideas for like um, movesets for barbarian characters and then area of uh, attack movesets and things like that. There's all these so many fun things that you could do, do and I'd love to see what you guys can put together as well. And of course I hope to see you on the next video here on Shadowversity. So until that time, farewell.